uh, this is a very simple topic interpersonal and uh, team building i think i don't need this student thank you i i have a couple of questions this is going to live All right. Uh, the topic is very simple, but I have brought a very, very uh, latest concept connected with interpersonal skills. Now, before we, you know, begin with this concept, just wanted to know how many of you have attended sessions on interpersonal skills and team building. Okay. All right. All right. So once we finish the session, you will tell me whether you had heard the same stories when it comes to team building and interpersonal skills. So what I'm trying to tell you is. interpersonal skills is a very common slot under the umbrella term of soft skills having said that people are not very good when it comes to people skills interpersonal skills so to quote uh, sarvapalli radhakrishnan he says we have learned to fly like birds we have learned to swim like fish but unfortunately not only in professional perspective even in personal life because there is a lot of ego clashes friction and my way is highway all kinds of things you know which is not easy so no amount of sessions no amount of gyan you get from people you feel yes i think this is where i have to work on myself tweak my behavior so on and so forth and i can tell you that in most of the corporates people fail not because they have a dearth of skill sets but because of the dearth of people skills i cannot manage this team i have a problem with this boss of mine and i am not very comfortable with my client he or she is nagging me and i am not very happy about few things this is what you hear people make the you know blatant statements and you would also have heard people saying that i left this organization not because of anything because of my boss you know uh, the organization was fantastic i love to work there but unfortunately people were like that so that's where we are boiling down people skills or interpersonal skills not very easy it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of um, just now i mentioned authenticity you know authenticity is the key anybody can have a plastic relationship oh yeah or her okay so people don't have a value for relationship i'm not uh, generalizing but that's how it is but we also say networking is important we also say that network is equal to net worth and all that friends please understand one thing interpersonal communication starts from within and then you end up building interpersonal relationship right when i say intrapersonal communication it's all what you believe in yourself meaning your values your preconceived notions your perceptions your thought processes your experiences definitely helps in creating that bond with others right it's always like that so the intrapersonal and interpersonal are two different things but then yeah they are tightly glued they are connected to one another so with this thought uh, i get it going i don't want to repeatedly use few things which are known to everybody so that was uh, my introduction and objective yeah i want to know whether you have any experiences to share with me when it comes to interpersonal communication oh yeah i had fantastic people skills with this particular team and that's why i am going through you know i am still on with this organization or no no i am not i was not very comfortable to work in this place so i had to put down my papers any experience to share with me don't worry we will not uh, let those secrets go out of this room <laughs> yes please any experiences just to engage you that's all okay naturally so there's a lot of uh, ego flying around right all the time you say people say i i know better things i think i've been working here for 24 years and so all of us have experiences you know some of us don't want to say but then yes we carry a lot of experiences no problem Okay, so I'll not talk on all these perspectives because you're all uh, esteemed audience, and everybody knows what is interpersonal skills. And we're not here to discuss about this, but yes, I want to talk to you something on a very new concept which is in the world today. When you connect to interpersonal skills and teamwork, now we said that people skills are very important, and we said people skills go hand in glove with the team, right? And all of us are working with team in a team. and imagine if not for a team's effort i don't think i'll be standing here today that's how the whole world is so how do you think interpersonal skills and the team work can be en en enhanced through a philosophy is there a philosophy is there a principle is there something new that you can learn as participants yes of course i'm taking you through that but before uh, that you know uh, 
we'll come back to this yes i want to discuss this case in point who are these people what is this i'm uh, i'm displayed i'm displaying on my powerpoint no idea anybody okay mars mission mangalyaan isro powerful story you can't afford to say you have not heard this yes that's a sad part because many of us do not know the simple simple yet powerful women simple yet powerful women start with sita meenal nandini and ritu they are the people behind mars mission they are the ones sorry no 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 yes there is a movie on no doubt there is yes there is a movie on so they are the people who put india up there okay now why have i shown only women in this team any particular reason any wild guesses please no ma'am okay yeah yeah i got it i right, correct correct but 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 still i'm just making you think otherwise why only women why am i showing only women there no women empowerment sorry nothing like that i'm making you think i am i am looking in a very different angle i don't know if i'm right but okay oh. any idea team work okay okay again that goes to women empowerment anything else mm no sister okay i put everybody there on one particular slide to tell you that when women work together there is always lot of sparks in the air <laughs> i might be wrong but generally that's how it is there's lot of sparks men we have not heard problems in men hostel yaar yes they have uh, drunken brawl that's a different story okay women hostel always problem i can't adjust with her ma'am i have a major problem you know she keeps singing in the morning she dances in the morning or she is there late night i cannot adjust all the time you hear scores and scores of problem from women's hostel do you agree with me if you if you can always beg to differ i mean that's not a problem you can't generally find women aligned to a common goal generally i am not again generalizing generally people have their own clashes if you have wonderful women bosses i think uh, all credit goes to the team the kind of vision and mission the kind of alignment the kind of objective lot of things that has gone into it not easy because women everybody on the powerful status position also have their own minds and yes there's a lot of chaos and confusion not easy so this is a miracle if you ask me. and as you rightly said there was one woman who was uh, frying puri in her kitchen and then she realized her stove has switched off and then the existing oil uh, puri is getting fried and it's not a rocket science everybody knows that and the difference is she picked this idea and she said why not i can use this in the lab and that's the trigger for mars mission it's a deadly combination it's a deadly combination of soft skills plus technical skills not easy not at all easy there would have been lot of uh, indifferences there would have been lot of disagreement there would have been lot of ego clashes there would have been lot of things but 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 they all came to one platform when they said put india up there and that can happen only when we have solid people skills and team work hence this case in point this very close to my heart if you do a bit of research you'll understand how uh, the deadly combination of soft skills and technical skills have ended up in this project simple indian woman yet profound all right let's go back and quickly try out some situations before i talk about a technique okay there are few situations put forth here i want everybody to pick one situation and have a quick answer uh there is an argument uh, sorry urgent meeting to be held to execute the project management as it's a weekend and your team is not ready how do you go about it as a first situation second the merger in the organization has left an emotional imbalance among the workforce consequently many of them are planning to quit as a team lead how do you convince your teammates your manager does not listen to anybody's opinion he thinks it's wise to make decisions based on his gut feelings you've been observing this pattern for quite some time now you want to raise a discussion without creating any room for conflict so any answers on these three situations i think each one of you can pick one 
Okay, let's start with the first one. What do you think you will do as a team? I think you can pick up the second one. There's a merger happening in the organization. And third, anybody, this team or the other team. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. You have some. Okay. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So you might use a bit of persuasion. You might, uh, push is required. yes, push is required, but transparent communication is also needed, right? So you will go around and continuously, consistently talk to people. Communication. Communication is the key. Fantastic answer. Can we have a strong round of applause? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, what about you guys? Yeah, yeah, but it's not so easy. Huh? We always love to have change, but the moment there's change in the process, people make a hue and cry. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. There's a need for. Absolute. Agreed. Totally agreed. Yeah. The third one. Would you like to take up, or can I pass it around? Any try? Hmm. Please, please. Hmm. Okay. They're not ready before completion. So what? What? What's my idea? I so I can say we'll go for chemo. So we have some participation. So telling uh, something to them. I can call them. Uh, I can yeah. teach them. And so you will not directly communicate. You will use some strategy to bring them back. Because we in which situation they can't be able to come. So for them, it's a there will be person. Okay. So you will play around and ensure that these guys are brought to the table. No problem. Yeah. Would you like to add something? Yeah. To, uh, his point, first point, only where in other meeting you have to make the changes. Other way around, uh, a little reinforcement type which can give in a positive way that the organization belongs to you and you belong to organization. And if we succeed in our uh, project, we have a fun we can never. So many more uh, celebrations can happen. Can be one of the positive uh, all right reinforcement so the same as these guys a uh, bit of uh, persuasion uh -huh. uh. So each uh, and everybody carries their own style. There is absolutely no nothing called as right and wrong. Before I forget, I wanted you guys to write a toolkit for yourself. This is very important because uh, you know every session should carry some key takeaway. So what is a toolkit, by the way? And uh, see, this is nothing but an imaginary toolkit. But I would want you to write this toolkit uh, today when you walk out of this hall. Definitely, you need to have this uh, toolkit with you. <laughs> so, uh, why this toolkit? I'll tell you. The reason is, you should learn something new. You should have some new jargons, which is used uh, in a real time. It just can't be a definition. It just can't be something. So, in the toolkit, first of all, you write a few things. I'll give you the right tools and techniques before that. So, why did I explore the situation to make people? Yeah, you can just shut down. Situations differ, but everything, you know, all these styles, whichever people carry, it's of course they're unique. You can't say this is right and this is wrong. As uh, professionals, you might have certain strategies, tools, and techniques, right? So why this toolkit, first of all? Toolkit is nothing but, what is a toolkit, by the way? By the way, where do you use the toolkit? What are the things you find in your toolkit? 
Ah, exactly. You have some repair. When you have some repair, you have your hammer, screwdriver, right? So, so similarly, you have your toolkit today. The moment you leave this hall, you'll find that your toolkit is a little heavy. And this toolkit, you can use it at any point in time, wherever you are, irrespective of what kind of jobs you do. So the first tool for the day would start with what is called as Kaizen. I'm sure you have heard the name Kaizen, K-I-Z-E-Z-A-N. Kaizen is your first tool in your toolkit. Okay. So what is Kaizen? How am I licking? K-I-Z-E-N. So Kai means good, Zen means change. Okay. Kaizen means continuous improvement. So when professionals, we end up taking certain decisions, looking at the bigger picture of your organization. So please understand when you say interpersonal skills, when you talk about people skills and all that stuff, you should always remember whatever kind of decisions you take should be beneficial for the organization. Not There's no personal agenda as well. Oh, I am his best friend, so I take a decision and I feel, oh my God, my best friend, my colleague is uh, disturbed with this decision, so I tweak it. So I'm not a professional if that means. Right? So we always believe in continuous improvement, keeping in mind the organization structure. So the first tool which I'm discussing for you is Kaizen. This is a Japanese philosophy. And Japanese, you know how strong they are when it comes to quality. Right? Hiroshima and Nagasaki was completely destroyed. And they have the natural calamity. So the man-made calamity and the natural calamity together, complete destruction. But they are always comeback specialists. Comeback specialists. Right? So they believe in continuous improvement. And believe me, friends, there is a difference between the word continuous and continual. Continuous and continual. Anybody out here? Can, can you tell me what is continuous and continual? Okay. So continuous is the, the, yeah, the graph keeps going up. Continual is, it goes up and stands for some time and takes a deviation and then perhaps again starts. So they believe in continuous. There is nothing called as a full stop and comma. So please understand your people skills concept should be a continuous process. It's not that one day I have a relationship with him, I go connect with him and then I don't even remember him and recall him. Oh, now I remember that after five years I remember I need his help and then I desperately look into my database, I don't find his number. I look here on the LinkedIn and try, try spotting him out and calling him. That's how we work, unfortunately. That's not right. You need to have good relationship with people. Because at the end of the day, it's symbiotic relationship. It's win-win relationship. It, it, see, look at the metaphor of the nature, you know. Nature has been consistently giving everything to mankind, regardless of the fact whether you are a saint or a sinner. Same thing holds good with us. So when Sheelan said that we have a connect from so many years, for us it is authentic relationship. I mean it. Okay? It's nothing like, okay, I have got some work with Sheelan, so I just always connect with her or vice versa. Nothing like that. We are not con uh, continuously in touch, but then... If something comes up, we definitely connect and there is a purpose, we go ahead. So relationships are important. That is where you can build people's skills. So please connect with the component of Kaizen which says continuous improvement. Be it in your intrapersonal communication, continuous improvement, interpersonal communication, inter uh, you know, team building, whatever, continuous improvement. All right. So quickly we move on. I know I, I should uh, cover things, keeping in mind uh, the time factor. So here is a beautiful acronym very powerful acronym, you know, which can be used for building a strong interpersonal communication. So this is called Dear Man. Dear Man. D, describe. E, express. A, assert. R, reinforce. M, mindful. A, appear. N, negotiate. So when I say dear, describe, use clear and concrete terms. Could we go see another movie instead of, I don't want to do that. Look at the examples and perhaps uh, I'll, I'll explain to you in detail. Express that people know how you feel. I feel because. Assert, don't beat around the bush. Get rid of the word. I don't know. Maybe. We see. Reinforce, reward people with positive outcome. As you rightly said, reinforces. Mindful, don't forget the objective of the controversion, uh, conversion, con conversation. Don't be subtracted by controlling negative emotions. Appear. Appear confident, negotiate, no one can have everything they want all the time. Wow, what a beautiful statement. Dear man. Okay, so when we say dear man, this is again a solid tool being used across to build assertiveness. Assertiveness helps in building better communication, right? Not aggressiveness and not passiveness. I'm sure all of us know that. 
don't need much emphasis on that. By the way, this is not my philosophy. I'll quickly move to my philosophy, which is very interesting. But this, these things are very much known and redundant. Assertiveness, how do we go about building assertiveness? Are there any techniques for assertiveness? So on and so forth. So first, uh, assertiveness, you can take one tool, uh, you know, which is called as broken record technique. Broken record technique. You can do all this uh, research based on uh, your toolkit. What is broken record technique? How do you think it can be used to build assertiveness, assertive communication? So how you say in sales communication, we talk about IDA. IDA, A-I-D-A. IDA model. Attract the audience, influence or interest, bring the interest, drive in the desire to take an action. Right? IDA. So similarly, we talk about for assertive communication, it's always broken record. So how do you think people, this is a one-day workshop, how to build assertive communication using various techniques. So under that, we have one technique called as the broken record technique. So how do we go about building broken record? What is broken record technique? So we say that if you repeatedly, redundantly use certain statements, for example, let's assume that uh, he's, uh, yeah, he's my son. Okay, just an example. So he's been calling me because uh, he is planning to get his girlfriend uh, home today. Okay, this evening. Uh, it's just an example. So... He wants to convince uh, mom, so he kept on calling me and I have a session to attend and I find that uh, he's con calling me consistently. Now, I don't want to be aggressive with him, though I'm very angry and upset, that's a different story. And I don't want to be passive with him because he might take me for granted. I want to use a bit of assertiveness. So I'm, I'm very keen on broken record. So what I do, what's your name by the way? Surya. <coughs> so I say, I pick the call, say, Surya, you know what? I have a session now. Can we talk after some time? No, Surya said, no, Mama, you, we can talk about that. But I just want to tell you that I'm going to bring Mini home by 5 o'clock. Is it fine? I just want you to convince Papa. I said, Surya, please, please, please understand. I have a session now. I'll talk to you regarding this later on at 3 o'clock maybe. No, 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 no. Please listen. I have a session now. Yeah? Okay, thanks. So repeatedly, I told Surya that there is a session now. I have to attend that. That's my priority. I'm not putting him down, neither... Nor I'm not trying to say that, uh, okay, go around, yeah, I don't care. You bring mini, guinea, shini, I don't care about anybody. I didn't say anything. I just, I'm very upset. It's not to say that I don't have emotions or I'm not frustrated. I'm very upset about it. But I wanted to deliberately use assertiveness because relationship matters. Right? So I say, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know all that. I'll talk to you later. Currently, I'm in a session. I have to attend. So what happens? He has no other option but to stop or... Angus, he, he has to stop his uh, call. He has to put me on hold or he has to say, okay, I can't talk to her. Now. That's broken record. It's picked from the word gramophone. You'd have seen gramophone. So when the gramophone gets stuck in one place, you'll see that same rhythm going back. Uh, you would have heard that rhythm, right? So the same thing. It's picked from that. Repetition, redundancy of words. Very powerful. It is used in sales and marketing again. Your customer comes, is upset and screams at you. Take it everything and say, yes, we do understand. Just hold on. And then go back. Okay? Very tough, but very strong technique. Very tough. Not easy. But then, yes, very strong. So, this is used for assertive communication. Right? So, dear man, you can uh, refer this uh, whenever you want. I don't want to waste my time on this because I'm more interested on the philosophy which I'm going to introduce to you right away. Uh, so, we said... We quickly move on to the interpersonal skills to team building. So people's skills to team building. And without team, there's nothing. Together, empowering to achieve more. We are all seated here uh, because of team. All thanks to the student community who are always there to help around and build that. Uh, you know, they, they ensure that the dots are connected. The team. So again, the same example, but what goes into a team, all of us know. Good group dynamics, constructive and productive team. Mutual understanding and trust. I love that word, trust. T-R-U-S-T. You is in the middle, the word T-R-U-S-T. You are responsible. Self-correcting behavior, collective decisions, listening, productively brainstorming ideas. Okay, no problem. We will not worry about all this because it's known to all of you. Okay. Uh, why team fails? Yes, we also know why team fails. Uh, due to various reasons. Again, you know, the status and ego, low standards, ambiguity, artificial harmony, etc. But, but, but. 
keeping in mind my time factor. I'm introducing a very new concept. This is called as gung ho. Anybody out here in the class have you heard this word? Gung ho. Gung ho leadership. Gung ho. Anybody? You, you, I'm, I'm sure you guys are hearing this for the first time. It is a very new model in the field of behavioral science. In the Western world, there are a lot of workshops being conducted on Gungo leadership, residential programs on Gungo leadership. Now, what is this Gungo? So, China of late was in, uh, was in news for COVID, Corona, etc. So, China again is in, uh, in the, as, as a buzzword, China is again out there for this beautiful concept, you know. So, what does this say? It's a simple, very simple, very simple aspect of uh, building relationships, building team, speaking from the nature. Okay. Ken Blankert has written a book on this. You can refer whenever time permits. But let me take you through the philosophies of gung-ho leadership and building dynamics. So, the whole of gung-ho relies on the three most solid principles. What are they? First one is quietly somewhere. Quiet. A quiet squirrel? No way. Right? Squirrel. What do you think squirrel does, by the way? Jumps. What, what do you think? Squirrel. What do you S Q U? Uh, sometimes. I mean, I, my question was, what do you think a squirrel does all the time? Uh, so all, all the time it's jumping around. Uh, restless. It is collecting grains. It's busy eating. You know, you, you it's it's always full of spirits. You can't think of a squirrel which is quiet, which is timid, which is just seated there like an owl. No way. Right? Look at the concept, how beautifully they have woven Ken Blanket and Paulus. These two guys have come up with the concept of gung ho. Gung ho, meaning the word gung ho, it just yeah, it brings a lot of energy. Come on. Wake up from your deep slumber, no matter what's happening in the world. Today it's virus, tomorrow can be a bacteria, day after can be an alien from some part of the planet. We really don't know. We are all sailing in a VUCA world. We've been hearing this VUCA world. Now I wouldn't even use the word VUCA. You know what is VUCA, right? Any idea? V-U-C-A? VUCA, any idea? Okay. Huh. V stands for... Uh, Volatility, U stands for, yes, uh, C complex, A ambiguity. Now we have moved from, you know, VUCA to BANI, B-A-N-I, brittle, anxious, non-linear, incomprehensible, BANI. BANI and Thirdare Kannada Lik BANI, come forward. <laughs> so BANI this is, okay, brittle, brittle, just breaks like papad, brittle. Life is so brittle. We never thought that a coffin cold will drive us to the graveyard. Correct? Anxious. All the moment you there is so much of anxiety in us. Oh, my cooker did not beep this morning. I'm anxious. What happened? Don't tell me that it's going to give me a shock. Now it will burst out. I stepped out of the house. I don't know whether I have switched off the gas stove or not. I have my own doubts. I'm just giving an example. Don't worry. <laughs> so I'm talking about anxious, non-linear, incomprehensible. So, unfortunately, we are sailing through very tough times. These are very tough times. And this is where emotional resilience is being talked about. Emotional agility is being talked about. So, this philosophy of gung ho relies on only three principles. The first being the spirit of the squirrel. How can you bring enthusiasm regardless of what's happening around you? Knowing we make the world a better place, everyone works towards the shared goals, values, guides, all plans, decisions and actions. We are connecting this to teamwork. So, the gung-ho concept says, be like a squirrel. Meaning, carry the spirit of a squirrel. Have a value. What is a value? Okay, my value is to ensure that I touch base on the short-term and long-term goals. I ensure that the team has benefited. I ensure that the organization is uh, catching up with its um, benchmarking processes whatsoever. So, let's quickly watch a video on squirrel. And then move on to the next concept. Help me out. Uh, can I play directly? This is there, right? Mm, one second. Oh, 
Quick answers. Okay, never give up. Okay. Sorry. Okay, life and food matters. Huh? All right. What else? Yeah, lot of lot of messages. Sorry. Survival of the fittest. Okay, so all that. So this was just to tell you that squirrels are very sharp. They are very strong. But according to Gung Ho principle, how do you think you can bring out the spirit of squirrel? Identifying your values. So I use this word in your toolkit. You can go ahead and write this. Your KRAs and KPIs. Yeah, please identify your. key result areas and your key performance indicators very important if you have to have the spirit of the squirrel you have to understand your key result areas what are my key result areas what am i good at what are my competencies what are my skill sets it could be communication it could be working under pressure it could be technical skills it could be anything right but identifying your key result areas matters so when we say plans identify how do i convert my kras into kpis key performance indicators so the entire corporate uh, assignments work on kras and kpis of people if you don't have kras and you can't achieve kpis so you definitely have to know your kras so there is a urge there is a continuous uh, you know uh, you know stronger enthusiasm to identify your kras so how do i update how do i learn how do i relearn how do i build better uh, competencies better batteries of skill sets so on and so forth so the day you say i think i am 24 years experienced professional i don't think i don't i, I don't need any more skill sets then you become totally a fossil extinct so that's where the spirit gets lost so according to the gungo principle it says you should have a spirit of a squirrel as simple as that now let's move on to the second principle what is this any idea beaver have you seen a beaver very rare we have not seen a beaver right any of us have not seen a beaver so i'll show you what uh, a beaver looks like the second principle is from the beaver so what is this beaver i'll show you the video again beaver is an animal uh, which is in the water and it just looks like a bigger version of rat they are very good in building bridges very good in building bridges bridges can you believe in the water like man made bridges using all that you know whatever aquatic uh, yes aquatic plants whatever you find the marine they make beautiful bridges and why are why do you think gangho was talking relying on the second principle of uh, beaver because it seems beaver works continuously it doesn't wait for orders it doesn't wait for instruction from anybody it goes on doing its work not like us Oh, if the boss is not around, come on, yeah, we'll go to the cafeteria and have uh, two cups of coffee and chit chat for a while. This man is always here. Okay. Oh, boss is not there from Monday. Come on, I think it's a honeymoon phase. Wonderful. Nobody to scrutinize. Indian mindset. We talk about theory X, theory Y, and you know, you know all that in organization behavior. It's that. If somebody is there, oh, you know what? These guys put us under a scan all the time. You know, trying to find out what we are doing. Not very happy. So. beaver is a great example to tell you that beaver doesn't wait for instructions beaver doesn't bother whether the boss is around or not it goes on doing something constructive and as can we all also try and become a beaver that's what gango talks about the second is for beaver and i'll show you the video how powerful it is so it says uh way of the beaver in control of achieving the goal each beaver has a large measure of control over its own destiny each beaver on its own decides how the work is going to be done i like that third it decides on the work each beaver operates like an independent contractor so the point is the way of the beaver fulfills the plan for the beaver i mean the the beaver has its plan it strategizes it goes on and on and on doesn't wait for any instruction so what kind of tools can we add in practicality so i am giving you another solid tool this is called as apa c a p a apa corrective and preventive actions c a p a apa 
not the kapha cold not the kapha c a p a corrective and preventive action this is a solid document you know so i'll tell you how you can apply this uh, practically so let's assume that you're working on a particular project or you're working on an academic calendar or you're working on a um examination planning or whatever as academicians right or you're planning on revising the curriculum whatever so you should also have in mind corrective and preventive actions what are the things that you can correct right away and what are the things that you can pre prevent in future so that there's no error there's no uh, issues there's no challenges right so during pandemic we have all had lot of kapas we have identified we have corrected lot of processes we have went to we went back to the online mode we had planned accordingly we had divided tasks accordingly and all that so this is a solid tool we use in the corporate corrective and preventive actions they are very important for all of us so that's where we connect this concept to the beaver you keep doing your task but at the same time be prepared for any fall back and errors that can happen because challenges are very common you can't run away from challenges but do you have preventive methods okay so that's your fourth tool kit tool in your tool kit let's move to the third and the last philosophy keeping in mind i'm i'm going with the gist of the topic i don't want to exceed the time in fact we do such sessions for one whole day okay so a lot of exercises a lot of things that goes around but yes keeping in mind the one hour uh, aspect i have to uh, shrink it but yes not compromising the content at any cost so the third is the gift of the goose i'm sure all of us have seen lot of uh, geese flying in v shape right you would see that one is in the forefront and there's this two layers of people flying i mean birds flying flying very very uniformly you would have seen that we'd watch that both this videos together because they can switch off the light and anyway. so how do you think this geese is connected as a third philosophy cheering one another motivate how important right motivation is sometimes you will not i mean you will not uh, i mean uh, sh get shocked if i tell you that sometimes even children back home they say mama you are doing a great job mama you look so nice you feel so happy yes especially you know that kind of motivation so it's not that motivation has to happen for you know professional aspect even sometimes the home front people give you some kind of motivation some kind of uh, feel good factors you feel very nice about so they say cheering is very important cheer people hey this color looks so bright on you there's no harm if i say that sister you look so serene for me so nice amazing sir i appreciate your seniority you are still there on the learning learning platform it's a huge inspiration and i mean it very nice so cheering up you know each other is needed so we pick this philosophy from the uh, geese or the goose they say that active or passive congratulation must be true must be authentic so as we started in the you know in the initial talk in the session we said that it has to be authentic it just can't be false and it can't be plastic yeah it just can't be that artificial talk it says active or passive congratulations must be true no score no game and cheer the progress so e is equal to mc square here we talk about enthusiasm equals mission times cash and congratulation so here all the three aspects are important you know we need intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation so when i say intrinsic motivation the motivation that comes from within i always say this is the best exercise that you should be doing pat yourself and say i think i am doing a good job i am managing my home front i am managing my in laws my mother in law uh, i am managing myself i am managing these children i am managing everybody out there and i am managing a good profession so i think you need to motivate yourself and secondly we also say that yeah what is the rewards and recognition that my organization gives me you know so i feel motivated yes money is a huge motivation don't tell me that oh we are not working for money you know i i i don't believe that state all of us at the end of the day don't eat soil and uh, sand right we eat food and we need money all of us are working for money don't tell don't make a say no money is not important money is very important that's also a part of your rewards and recognition what just imagine that you are not getting an incentive or a promotion will you still continue there no no i think this performance appraisal was not very good yet mm i'm planning to look out for something why do you think people say this money please right so here the concept of uh, geese 
refers to enthusiasm equals mission times cash and congratulation. It has to be congratulations must be true. Cheer for your team. Build authentic relationships. Just three philosophies, but stronger philosophy. Now we will watch the video, but before that, so can these animals help? Spirit of the squirrel is doing the right work. Way of the beaver, do work the right way. Gift of the goose, do work for the right reward. If so, then you will have a team that is gung ho. Okay, so doing the right work, uh, doing it, do work for the right and do work the right way. Now, this is being used in various organizations. So, that's a true story. Andy Longclaw died in 1994. Peggy Sinclair promised to spread his uh, grandfather's teaching about gung ho. She walked into a restaurant, met Ken Blankard and Sheldon, and they wanted to know about uh, brilliant yet simple ideas, earned Walton Works number two recognition. So, what is what do you think this is? So, how a person like... Uh, Peggy, Peggy was instrumental in spreading this information. So she ha had heard the story of uh, these three principles of gung ho. She met Ken Blankert and spoke to her about this particular three philosophy. They made it as a book. Even till date, many of the organizations are using this as an intervention to bring a difference in their organization culture. Okay, simply carrying the spirit of squirrel, being like the beaver, and finally cheering like your. Uh, Geese, so that, you know, there is a lot of peace and harmony in your team. That, that's how you build cohesiveness, synergy, rapport, solid relationships, camaraderie. And let's always believe and understand that everything happens when you give, you know, give from your head. It's not that you always can take something. You need to give from your head. That's how the relationships are built. So let's quickly watch the other two videos also. And this is, this is a game actually, which will go on for at least 45 minutes. Of course, we don't have time, but yes, uh, I think the two videos should be discussed with you. Uh, will be shown to you, right? Let me just give me a second. We'll go with the beaver first. Lights off. Ah, perfect. <laughs> Which is a certain depth, they automatically switch energies from down to construction and put them in the air. More and more long as the hand is The more they use this energy, the beam is stretched above. All this manual labor helps to keep the beam through the suit coat. Be that from its own body. From start to finish, it takes just 20 days to build the lock, using around three tons of raw material. Beam's home is high security. Protected by a moat with several
The last tool which I want to add in the toolkit is Ubuntu. U B U N T U. U B U N T U. Solid tool which talks about uh, the teamwork, which clearly says, I'm what I'm because of you. I'm what I'm because of you. Right? So all of us are the mutually connected, you know. See, you would say that I'm what I'm because of parents, I'm what I'm because of my teachers. 
I'm what I'm doing my institute. I'm what I'm, what I'm doing my organization. So it's an applicant job which clearly indicates that you know, all of us are interconnected, all of us are interdependent, and all of us are interrelated to us. So Ubuntu is a solid tool that gives you a feeling that I'm what I'm doing for some person. Let us give credit for that. So don't you bring people skills and lead that into your actions? So let's not forget. Can you see the point? All right. So let's quickly have the three philosophies of one book. Okay, and try and see how this toolkit is going to be beneficial. So I said the first one was the spirit of the squirrel. So where do you connect that spirit of the squirrel? What was the tool? What is the tool that you would like to say is matching the spirit, enthusiasm? Guys, the authentic relationship. Right? Next, we said what? What do you mean? Yes, be like a beaver. Be like a beaver. Okay? Beaver goes on and on. It doesn't wait for somebody to scrutinize and give instructions and orders. There's nothing called as boot licking the boss. Okay? Nothing like uh, doing flattery for people. It's on and on. I'm given this task and continue doing it. I have my plan. So I know my KRAs, my KPIs. So broken record goes for the urgent communication. Don't get that. The few KRAs and KPIs are your plans to build your competencies. Repositories of skill set without which you cannot. Right? So that's why you should be like a beaver, go on and on building your competencies, your repositories of skill sets. Don't wait for people to nudge and say how many papers have you published, how many workshops have you attended, what is the consulting assignment you have taken up. You know, you go on, you, know, you keep continuing your journey. How beautiful is that, right? Identify your team are performance. And then we said the third one, cheer like the breeze. Work like Help people if possible. Don't harm people. If you can't help them, forget it. No problem. Don't harm people. Stand, stand by with your team. Help. Build that camaraderie, rapport relationships. It's very important. Things we don't know who will be, you know, uh, prepared for help, helping our, our people person. Yes, situations vary and all of us should work together. That's the key value of building trust. So here we said, yes, let us also look into what is called as corrective and could go wrong. Trials and trials and errors. That the turnaround time which is needed for completing any task, any project, any assignment, anything for that matter. And finally, the solid word <laughs> young African process. So that's the combination of the African and African process. Now, don't you think it is too heavy? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Is your toolkit heavy or not? And before we close, what is that one, one, one new technology or jargon we learned by being in this all for one? Gungo. Gungo. Fantastic. Okay. Beaver. Be like beaver. Okay. Anything else? Gungo. Jago. Sorry? Yeah. Spirit of, spirit of the spirit. Anything back? Fear man works. Wisdom of the geese. Dear man worksheet. Okay, dear man worksheet. Acronym. Acronym. Fantastic. Alright, so carry this uh, toolkit for a lifetime. Apply it. It's not that uh, you know, write something and then you go that you can forget. Whenever you sit on certain platforms and make some notes, revisit the entire project and try and apply it in real time. So, this note, I'm on time. Thank you so much for being with us. A great evening. Have a pleasant evening. Till we meet again. Thank you so much. I know the Society Lake is having the first session, but you know they managed to take it very well. The information is in the
Thank you.